Hello, friends. At the very beginning of creating my smart home, among other things, I made a backlight for the TV. Initially, it was a color Wi-Fi bulb from Yeelite, then a USB Zigbee LED strip stuck around the perimeter of the back part. It turns on synchronously with the backlight of controlled chandeliers from Yeelite, creating unobtrusive lighting that does not interfere with watching movies. But I have long wanted to try dynamic lighting, lighting that synchronizes with the image on the screen, thereby creating a depth effect. At the same time, I was looking for an option that could integrate with the smart home. And in this video, I will talk about just that. Before we start, as usual, I ask you to like this video. It will help other people interested in the smart home topic find it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so before. Device type, adaptive backlight for TVs. Model, H601. Video, HDMI, supports 4K 60Hz, HDR10+. Strip length for diagonals 55 to 65 inches, 3.8 meters, for 75 to 85 inches, 5 meters. Diodes, addressable, 30 pieces slash meter. Maximum power, up to 24 watts. Power supply, 12 volts. Interfaces, Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz, Bluetooth 4.0, ecosystems, Tuya Smart, Smart Life. Support, Google Home, Amazon Alexa, Home Assistant. The device arrived safely packaged in a shockproof bag, so there's no need to worry about delivery. A simple cardboard box without any printing. The only identifying mark is a sticker indicating the length of the strip, in my case, 3.8 meters. Let's figure out what's included in the kit and how to use all this. Here's everything found in the box, a strip and a bag, a controller that manages it, an HDMI cable, a power supply unit, instructions, and mounting hardware. The type of plug for the power supply is specified when ordering. I accordingly chose the Euro plug. It is designed for an input voltage of 110 to 240 volts and an output of 12 volts, current up to 2 amps. The HDMI cable is quite thick and stiff. I think I will look for something shorter and more flexible, as in my case, it is not very conveniently placed. This is mounting hardware on double-sided tape. It may be useful for both the strip and the connecting cable. The instructions are in English. It lists the device parameters, the connection scheme, as shown in this picture, and the main application features. I will be using Tuya Smart, but its clones such as Smart Life can also be used. The strip is on a reel, as I already mentioned, in my case, 3.8 meters, as my TV has a diagonal of 55 inches. For connection to the controller, a standard USB port was decided to be used. Here, addressable diodes are used, which are controlled individually. This allows them to accurately synchronize with the image on the screen. The strip is already divided into four segments, which are connected to each other by wires. On one hand, this is convenient because it does not require independent connection and reduces the number of settings. On the other hand, it somewhat complicates the installation. The heart of the system is the controller, whose task includes controlling the addressable strip, including in synchronization mode with the image. On one of the long sides of the case are all the connectors, power, two HDMI, input and output, and USB for connecting the strip. It's important to understand that if you do not have an external signal source, an Android box, Apple TV, or similar, you won't be able to connect it. On the other side is a switch. Honestly, I have no idea why it was made. Under normal use, the controller is turned off programmatically. It can be assumed it was made for rebooting without touching the power cable. Before moving on to the installation, I'll show how the backlight was implemented before. It's a USB Zigbee LED strip, for those interested. A link to the review can be found in the description under the video. It is glued around the perimeter of the back of the TV. Unlike the one reviewed, it is not addressable, can only emit static light, and of course, does not synchronize with the image on the screen. During the testing shown in this video, I did not firmly attach this strip. I made a temporary mounting to understand whether it suits me or not. The length of each segment is practically equal to the sides of my TV, which has a 55-inch diagonal. I managed to secure the wires between segments with ties so they wouldn't stick out. Although my TV has Android and all the services I need, for testing the backlight, I needed an external signal source. I chose the Xiaomi TV box as it, though functionally it does not differ from the capabilities of a TV from the same manufacturer. Otherwise, I would not have been able to connect the controller. 
After the power is turned on, the device goes into connection mode, with the strip flashing yellow light. The device operates on a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network, so first, you need to switch your smartphone to it. Then launch the app, in my case, Tuya Smart, which detects the controller. Enter the parameters of your home network. Then wait a bit while the data exchange takes place, after which the controller reboots and is added to your network. Just to clarify, it does not need a gateway to work, it connects to the router's network. Upon first examination, the device's plugin is the same as other addressable lights in the Tuya Smart ecosystem. For those interested, links to reviews can be found in the description. The first tab is Manual Control of the Strip, where you can choose either static light or segment lighting, which can be selected from a list of presets or set manually. In the Scenes tab, there is a large number of preset dynamic effects spread across several tabs. Here you can find running lights, gradient color changes, and so on. This is how it looks. On the one hand, it's beautiful and impressive, but my main task is somewhat different, and we will soon get to it. However, having the ability to turn on such lighting when desired is good. Incidentally, it's not necessary to turn on the TV for this. Music mode. Roughly the same as what we just saw, but now in synchronization with music. And there are two modes, local, where the controller's microphone works, and app, when the smartphone's microphone is used. Other tab. Here there are two options. The first is a countdown mode, which is a time interval after which the controller will change its status. It will turn off if it was on and turn on if it was off. The second option is precisely what everything was designed for. This is the synchronization of the strip's operation with the image on the screen. Here you need to adjust the distance from the place of installation of the strip to the edges of the screen. In my case, it is installed right at the edge, so I moved all the sliders to the maximum. Additionally, you can choose one of three levels of brightness in this mode. To start, you need to press the green button at the bottom. Synchronization is carried out through the signal passing through the controller from the source, in my case, the TV box, to the TV. Without a signal, there will be nothing to synchronize with. This is how it looks. In my opinion, it's quite effective and exactly what I expected from the hero of the review. The synchronization is correct and fast. But there are certain points worth knowing. In particular, the synchronization occurs with the colors at the edges of the screen. Accordingly, if the image, most often these will be movies, has black bars at the edges, then the strip on these sides will not light up. This can be remedied with appropriate settings that can stretch or crop the image, thereby removing the black bars. In the general settings menu, there is information about compatibility with Amazon Alexa and Google Home, the option to check the firmware version, add a plug-in shortcut to the desktop, and remove it from the system. Let's move on to automations. The controller, like most devices in the ecosystem, can work in both the if section, triggers and conditions, and in the then section, actions. In the first one, there are 10 options available. The last two are not translated which are brightness and music mode and during synchronization with the screen. You can track the turning on and off of the controller, entering one of the modes, for example, for automatic brightness setting. There is also a countdown timer tracking. As usual in Tuya automations, they add everything necessary and unnecessary, in particular, settings for setting the strip out of synchronization mode. I can't even imagine how such triggers could be used, but nevertheless, they exist. 
There are also events for entering screen synchronization mode and setting brightness for it and for music mode. The action mode, what the device will do when an automation trigger is activated. Here are the same 10 options, only it's not about status tracking, but about setting it. Turning on and off, as is often the case, the most convenient option is missing, toggling the state to the opposite, setting the mode and countdown timer. Turning on the screen synchronization mode is, personally for me, the most important option. Settings for the strips placement, although logically this is set manually once at the very beginning, and that's it. And choosing brightness for music and synchronization mode. Since I'm only interested in synchronization with the screen, I created an automation whose trigger is the transition to the on state, and the action is the activation of the screen synchronization mode. That is, this happens immediately after the controller is turned on. It's worth noting that this is cloud automation, which depends on internet access. I'll remind you that compatibility with Google Home occurs at the level of cloud accounts. This is done once through the menu of devices compatible with the service. In the list, we find the Tuya account, enter our credentials, and after that, all compatible devices will be automatically pulled in here. The controller appeared, support is there. From the management side, only the most standard options are available, turning on and off setting a static color, and brightness. But, thanks to the automation created in Tuya, when the controller is turned on, it immediately goes into screen synchronization mode. This also works when controlled from here. Now let's move on to Home Assistant, starting with the standard Tuya integration. Shortly before conducting this test, its addition was significantly simplified. Now there's no need to register on the developer's site, create projects, and so on. You only need to enter the access code from the app and scan the appearing QR code in it. This integration works through the cloud and, like Google Home, automatically pulls in new devices, including the hero of our review. Control here is the same as in Google Home, turning on and off, setting static color modes, and brightness. In the system, this is a standard light object, which can be used in automations. Since the device remains in the standard Tuya Smart app, the automations created their work, in particular, the one that activates synchronization mode. For those who want to get local control, there is the local Tuya integration. Here, as of the video date, no changes, connection through registration on the developer's site and creating a project. Select the device from the list and connect to it. I use the default settings. If you get an error message at this point, reboot the controller by power and try again. Setting up the device comes down to determining which of its data points, connection points, is responsible for what. I usually first add all available as sensors. It turns out like this. Some data points are standard, similar to other lights, 20, turning on and off, 21, mode, 24, light parameters, here both color and brightness. Besides, there is control for synchronization mode, number 101, brightness for it in music mode, and so on. After identifying the necessary data points, I delete and reconnect the device, already creating specific objects for control. I made a separate light, using standard data points 20, 21, and 24. After that, I also added one switch object. In it, I added data point 101, for controlling synchronization with the screen. After that, I didn't add anything else. It turned out like this. The automation created in Tuya Smart continues to work. When the light is turned on, synchronization automatically activates. So, by and large, the standard integration will be sufficient. There's also standard control of the light with brightness setting and static light. Speaking of my impressions, I got what I wanted. An adaptive backlight system that synchronizes with the image on the screen and is controlled through Home Assistant. I don't see much point in the local Tuya integration for myself as there's no reason to turn on the TV box without the internet. Therefore, I use the standard Tuya integration combined with the shown automation. It's worth remembering the nuances that might not be obvious to everyone, such as the need for an external signal source, I mean the synchronization with the image, and the problem associated with the presence of black borders in it. That's all. I hope this video was useful and interesting to you. I would be grateful for your likes, they help with promotion on YouTube. If you don't want to miss new reviews and tutorials, subscribe to my channel. In the description under the video, I'll leave links to the store where this controller was purchased, other reviews on this topic, as well as my Telegram channel, Facebook page, and a group for discussing smart home questions.
Thank you for your attention. See you in new videos. Peace to everyone.